This is the Regain Wellness Podcast with Jamie Logie, episode 117, Five Reasons You May Want to Avoid CrossFit. Didn't your coach tell you to get in shape? It's our cheat day. We're going to be ripping silly fly magics right after this so they cancel each other out. Then it's arms. Just ripping concentration curls. Just ripping crossbody hammer curls. And just ripping alternate dumbbell bicep curls. Just ripping line close grip bar curl and high pulley. Just ripping alternate one-arm dumbbell preacher curls. Just ripping standing one-arm bicep curl over incline bench. You're an idiot. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jamie Logie. I run RegainWellness.com and this is a Regain Wellness podcast. So thank you for joining me here today. If it's your first time, many greetings and welcomes. And uh, if you're new and you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. That way you get these shows automatically sent to you every week and that way I don't have to drop them off at your door um, really go out of my way, saves everyone a lot of hassle. So any, actually anywhere you listen to podcasts, I'll be there like the Jackson five. Um, so whether it's like Android or iTunes, you know, Apple, whatever, I'm pretty much in everything's like Google play, Stitcher radio, iTunes is probably the most popular. So make sure you subscribe and that way you get everything as, uh, as soon as it comes out. So today's episode is about CrossFit. And you probably, if you're involved in fitness, no doubt you are aware of CrossFit. If you're not, this will be kind of a get you up to speed type episode talking about how it is obviously an amazing way to get fit, but a lot everyone thinks it's the only way to get fit. So this is just talking about some ways that it might not be specifically specifically for you. So I'll go through those reasons. And then you can decide, you know, if that's something you've been considering, you can kind of weigh these out. Um, so the, the whole thing's not like a diss on CrossFit, even though this is, you know, reasons why you may want to avoid it. But I'm just going to show why it might not be for everyone. And then you can kind of make your own conclusions and um, see if it's something for you. Or if you've been trying it, you can relate to it. Or uh, these might not apply to you. It depends where you are in your own fitness jersey journey not jersey journey so i'll cover um pretty much everything uh, i see people bringing up as far as like from working as a personal trainer in lots of gyms these are the questions i always have seen and get asked about crossfit so hopefully i'll cover everything relevant today okay here we go so i'll start out with what crossfit is just in case this is sort of new to you or you need a quick refresher it's basically crossfit is a It's a fitness regimen, like it's a branded fitness regimen uh, created by a guy named Greg, sorry, yeah, Greg Glassman. Um, So it's an actually, you know, registered company, CrossFit Inc. Um, It it was started around 2000 and what it's doing is promoting um, both, you know, physical exercise philosophy um, and also like uh, combining combining like a competitive fitness sport aspect so there are like there's the crossfit games and it's basically com- people competing against each other in a lot of um exercise and and workouts so it's based around the workouts are based around high intensity interval training which i've covered a lot on the show and i recommend you to listen to my shows on um, hit training and also a, a newer not a newer but a, a less popular, actually more or less unknown version called, um, lit training. So low intensity interval training, which is shown to have some of the same benefits that the high intensity version has, but it's a little basically less intense and it's easier on your joints and whatever. I've, so I've both of these shows that I think are worth listening to. If you want to learn really more in depth info on why you should be doing high intensity interval training. <clears throat> so if you go to the show notes, which is uh, a page on my website where I link up all the stuff I'm talking about today on this episode so you can find them in one easy um, to reach area. So that'd be regainwellness.com slash 117. So that's episode 117. And I'll link those episodes and all the other stuff I'm talking about. So if you've listened through it and you forgot, oh, what was that one thing I said or you wanted to check out more, it's all on that one 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 page. So pretty helpful. Um, so like I said, it's 
CrossFit incorporates the high intensity interval training, then Olympic weightlifting. It's also got, um, you know, plyometrics, there's powerlifting aspects. There's even like gymnastics aspects to it. Um, calisthenic, like all sorts of things, all these like high intensity, strong, powerful, big explosive type forms of fitness is what CrossFit is made up of. Um, As of right now, there are around 13,000 affiliated gyms. So they they basically have to be all connected. So it's not like they – they're kind of like franchises. Like um, This is a terrible example, but like a McDonald's, they can't just – you know, you can't just open a McDonald's and change the menu and run your own stuff. It's got to be connected to the whole overall thing. And that's the idea with CrossFit is they are affiliated. Um, And what people do is they have daily workouts that are called WODs, W-O-D, or workout of the day. And that, you know, kind of the base workout. So everyone's on the same page. The people who are working there or CrossFit certified trainers, um, they're all coming through that same certification. Like people aren't, you know, working at, they'll have outside certifications, I'm sure as well, but they're not going to hire someone who's done, you know, a different form of their own high intensity or Olympic weightlifting and coming with their own approach. They have to be under this like umbrella of the CrossFit um, affiliation. So that's what there's a good connection through all these things. So interesting out of all those gyms, so 13,000 gyms worldwide, half of them are in the U S. So, I mean, that's the core of all of its um, business and exposure and movement, but obviously they're, you know, it's a worldwide thing. So, yeah, like I said, the original idea for it was around even as early as 1996. Um, the first, you know, became that full official business in, in the year 2000. So the first one was in Santa Cruz, California. Um, then the first affiliated gym was called CrossFit North, and that was in Seattle. And by 2005, there were 13 of them. And like I said, today there are 13,000. And they... Um, have that like it's a huge growth if you think about it with that amount of gyms and affiliated gyms across so the growth has been amazing it's kind of more of a mainstream thing like you said there's a crossfit games there are now like crossfit athletes that have their own sponsorship deals i'm just thinking off the top of my head lauren fisher is one who she's just one i follow on instagram um and I think she has her own like brand of Nike shoes out and she competes in other like powerlifting events, but she's a cro there's tons of other ones I'm sure, but that's just the one that springs to mind. Um, so like I said, these are real, um, elite athletes and people they're using them. Like there's a real movement behind that. When you see a lot of sports shoes, commercials or like, um, under armor, Reebok, whatever, they're using that sort of, um, environment and that movement to promote, all their stuff like they don't it's not just lebron james and steph curry and whoever like these people that are very unrelatable and will never be like but anyone can do crossfit and they can do well at it so it's it's a little more the people involved they're a little more accessible as far as their like exposure and their reach and their connection to average people and stuff like that so like i said it's a huge movement and that comes up that it, it's promoted that it you know is this the only way to get fit and that's what a lot of people uh, have asked me about and they're just like do i have to you know should i stop going to my regular gym should i stop doing my boot camp classes or should i stop training for a half marathon and should i just do crossfit you know so that's what i'll look at here so i've got a bunch of ways i said five i'll actually go with a couple more i'll go seven ways that it just, it might not be ideal for you depending on the situation you're in. So the first one, first point why it might, um, may not be for you is to me, it's not ideal for beginners. Um, I think you're better off building up a basic base of fitness and learning how your body works before moving into something like CrossFit. And obviously they'll welcome people in and beginners. But like I said, if you've been sitting on a couch forever, um, it's going to be a bit of a shot going into something like this. So a lot of the, you know, the movements they're doing are based around Olympic lifts. They're incredibly technical. Like I've been doing them for years and I still, I'm never happy with how I'm doing. Like you can always improve on them. Um, so to me from the, based on what I see with the average person, I think if you haven't exercised in decades, this is really going to 
overwhelm and intimidate you. So if you're new to fitness, the best tip is to start slow and then build from there. Um, you know, whether that's just walking three times a week, um, doing, you know, yoga at home, like following YouTube videos, you want to build yourself up and you want to eventually hit that, the sweet spot of exercise, which is considered around 150 minutes of exercise a week. And, you know, that can take on lots of different forms. So like if you're brand new, just, you know, starting with hiking or swimming or tennis and then moving into a gym and starting a strength training program. To me, fr- again, this is from experience. People who take on too much all at once, they always burn out. They drop out, um, you know, within two to three weeks. When you start it slow, leaving yourself wanting more all the time, it's the best way to progress in fitness. Um, number two, depending on the, the CrossFit box, as they call them, which is their gyms, if you're not involved with elite coaches, don't bother. Um, basically, you know, like they'll, they'll have their, their certified trainers and all that stuff, but you want the absolute best. And there are a ton of amazing ones out there, like incredible elite, but make sure you're around them because you want to get the best results possible and not potentially do a lot of damage. Like I said, many of the movements, they're very technical so it's imperative to have that elite level coaching. If, like, like I said, if you don't, there's some extreme damage you could potentially cause to yourself. So you need that real guidance for, you know, just the exercise physiology and learning how your energy systems work and understanding the programming so you advance. And then nutrition, obviously, is a massive part of it. Um, and just learning all the technical details on something like like a clean or snatch, like these things are insanely detailed if you don't do them right. Um, so with the CrossFit coaches, there are four levels of CrossFit credentials and you'll want to know you're basically being instructed by the best since you're paying for it and you're paying a lot for it. I'll get to that in a bit. So the level one, this is as of right now. So, I mean, things always evolve and change, but as of right now, level one and two for CrossFit credentials, they only need to take a two day course and pass the written test they have every five years. So these levels are beginning steps, but make sure you are involved with coaches that are level three or above as they are certified CrossFit trainers, CCFTs. Um, there are more instructors now, so that's good. Like as this whole thing has grown, um, the CrossFit boxes, like the, the gyms, they have more access to getting the best possible coaches. Just make sure they really are the best possible coaches. Like, I mean, this is such a, a detailed and specific thing and you want to make sure you're not progressing as opposed to, you know, setting yourself up for your injury or real potential failure. The third reason you may want to avoid CrossFit is that the fact that many who participate in it were already fit going into CrossFit. You're definitely going to get fitter engaging in CrossFit and you'll get in better shape. And, you know, if you're doing it, you'll hope to be at that status of the top individuals you observe performing. Like I said, those sponsored athletes um, or the people now in commercials or in magazine spreads with massive social media followings. Um, you know, they didn't necessarily get that way because of CrossFit. The majority of the fittest people in CrossFit were probably already insanely fit when they were going into it. So it's not that, you know, again, I'm trying not to just the whole thing, but it's not that the CrossFit necessarily got them that fit. They were just already conditioned to be like that. And that's, it's helped accentuate them and definitely advance them. But, you know, CrossFit appeals to athletes or former athletes or gymnasts or fitness enthusiasts who are just looking to keep challenging themselves. So they, they've had, they're probably a step or two ahead going into CrossFit and they're like, oh, this is something I can, you know, embrace and use to challenge myself or they're, or they're coming out of, you know, fitness competitions or, um, bodybuilding or whatever, not in all cases, but just in a lot. So it's not that you won't get fit, But the results people want when they see these elite level CrossFitters, they may have already had that before they came in and they can't necessarily chalk it up just to CrossFit. So uh, the fourth reason you may want to avoid is that the programming, this, this is something I've had a struggle with, the programming can disregard recovery time and muscle soreness. So Being sore is not a bad thing. Um, It can show that you have worked hard, but if you're too sore for too long, 
you might have overdone it. They call it DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And I mean, a day, you know, it, it can happen at, within a couple of days. If you're sore for, you know, two, three days past or more, you probably overdid it a bit. And that's the problem sometimes with CrossFit is ideally you don't want to train, you know, unless you're an elite athlete or um, it's your job basically to work out. You don't really want to train a sore muscle. Um and that's the thing, like the programming may have you doing, say, you know, the workout, workouts of the day, it may have you doing some more leg exercises a day after you already became crazy sore doing squats or, or cleans or whatever. And then, you know, you're wa- you can barely walk in or walk down the stairs. And then that day you're doing, you know, more lunge based things or you're doing sprints or I don't know when you, when you keep trying to train sore muscles that can really lead to overtraining um, injuries, you know, muscle breakdown, then, you know, ultimately illnesses, cause you're just overwhelming your, um, central nervous system and your immune system's taking a hit and it can't properly recover. And that's when you get sick. So an issue that I've had with it, that's just been that. And again, if it's with people who've haven't been exercising for a long time and like, you're still learning, you know, what muscles are, what, and what feels sore after doing what things. And then you can constantly be beating your body down, um, with it. Fifth thing, and this might not seem like a big deal to you, but it it has been to people I talk to is, you know, the fifth reason you may want to avoid it is you're limited to the workouts that they provide. And, you know, granted, these are, they're good workouts. It's you're, they're meant to get you fitter and stronger and leaner and all that. So yeah, they are good. But if you're wanting to mix things up, it's a little tougher. Like say you just wanted to use a bike or a cross trainer for a day just to just have a little cardio workout, give your joints a break. You know, you're going to be pretty much out of luck as you're not going to find those pieces of equipment in the gym. And I'll agree. Like these are not the, the best choices for fitness. Um, there's better ways to get fit than, you know, doing long steady state cardio, but it's still nice for that cardiovascular effect and for heart health. And you just may want that little, you know, slower, less intense day. Um, or you're, you, like you said, you have those injuries or those joint problems or you're a little older or whatnot. So that's the trouble, you know, um, you're limited to what's just with those workouts they provide. So, you know, again, like high end, so I'm not disregarding, obviously high intensity workouts are going to be more effective than that long-term cardio for burning fat, improving fitness. But like I said, if you're run down and you just want, a little more low key thing. Um, yeah, you might not have that option. So the sixth reason, and again, probably one of the most relevant is CrossFit is not cheap in my city. So where I live in Southwestern Ontario, I couldn't find anywhere that had memberships less than $150 a month. That's a lot, 150 bucks. So from what it's considered, what's considered average is supposed to be $125 a month when you look at sort of CrossFit information as far as how much you're going to be spending. Um, that's supposed to be considered average, but I'm not seeing that anywhere. And this is in my city. Like I live a couple hours outside of Toronto. This isn't a major metropolis. So you can only imagine as you get into those bigger markets, whether you know if you live in like Los Angeles or New York or how much fitness goes up. Um, even with like, say personal training rates, I've trained rates, um, from down here. I've worked in some other countries where the rates vary, but considering I wouldn't call my city a small city, it's around, you know, 400,000. So an average size city, um, personal training rates I've trained have been anywhere from 35 to $65 an hour. And that's actually very cheap. When you go into bigger cities, like in Toronto, I don't know anyone who's charging less than 75 bucks an hour, more like a hundred, maybe 125. And then again, depending on where you live and the access to the quality of the trainers, it gets a lot more expensive from there. So like I said, in my city, 150 a month was the cheapest I could, I could find. And then on top of that, like these, you know, CrossFit gyms and stuff, they always will also offer personal training. And that's awesome because it can teach and enhance your skills. It can get you more comfortable. It's more one-on-one. That's again, awesome, but it's another added cost. So if money's not an issue, then perfect. You're all set. But for a lot of people that is, um, definitely 
something they have to consider. And it's at the same time, it's funny, like gym memberships have, have become cheaper than ever with a lot going as low as like 10 bucks a month, like planet fitness. So just an example, um, now where I this is in Canada again, and this is Ontario It's called uh fit for less. It's associated with good life fitness and they do like $10 memberships a month. Um, and, and these are not, they're actually not bad. I, I always like to try out these gyms. They're, they're always, you know, a lot of these ones are brand new. So all the equipment's new. They're super clean. You're not going to get that guidance. Like, you know, there's, they probably don't do orientation sessions. There's not a lot of staff on hand. Um, they're perfect for people who know what they're doing. Cause you just want to get in and not be bothered. Boom out the door. Um, they always have like really good cardio sections. They'll have good, you know, stretching equipment, you know, Swiss balls, foam rollers, the whole deal. Usually lots of weights. They're, they're really good. I've been to a bunch of them. Um, but if you need a little more attention and, um, focus, you, you're not going to get them in these discount gyms. Um, but then speaking of that, the most expensive gym I could find, again, this is in my city. The most expensive I could find was a $65 a month club. That was getting you full VIP treatment. So, you know, the the lounges, the VIP locker rooms, like with the sun is the whirlpools. These are in clubs that have, you know, you'd have to pay probably a decent amount for personal training. But if you're already paying that much for the membership, it's all right. So, I mean, that's, I mean, it's in CrossFit is not cheap just to sum it up. So maybe, I don't know that maybe they're getting cheaper in other places or maybe they're more expensive, but from what I found in my area, the cheapest I saw was 150 bucks a month. So that might have to, you know, be a huge consideration for you. Um, and then, so speaking of that with the last tip, number seven, you won't find the amenities that come with a fitness club. And like I said, some CrossFit boxes are starting to change this, but you're not, if you like those amenities and obviously nothing wrong with it, if you like the whirlpools and the saunas and the steam rooms and the towel service and all that stuff, you're not going to find it on going the CrossFit route. Um, you know, people, some people might think that's pampering or whatever, but you know, it's your money. You deserve to spend it how you want. Um, if you like more of that health club aspect, you're not going to get that with CrossFit. Um, I guess you're definitely entitled to them and, and if they make you feel more comfortable and they, you know, and those things help encourage you to actually get out and exercise because there's, you know, a little more reward in it for you. Um, CrossFit boxes, a lot of times they're hot, they're sweaty. They're not, they're not dirty, but they're not like, um, it's a place to work. And like person, I've always loved that type of thing. Like the gyms I grew up in were just pieces of crap, you know, rusted weights, um, ripped upholstery on the benches. But I love that stuff. I love that raw, whatever. But I definitely understand people want like a little more um, eliteness or a little more of that finer things, sort of finer touch, you know, that whole treat yourself thing. Um, and so you're not necessarily going to find that with CrossFit. So I'll wrap it up here. Um, like I said, I mean, it's not meant to be completely negative. I just think this is if I've heard these questions from a lot of people, I'm sure they pop up all the time too. So just more about informing yourself on this whole CrossFit deal. Um, it's been shared with me a lot and a lot of, you know, um, some of the gyms I've worked at, I can't tell you how many times we've had people come in for new members that are ex CrossFit people. And it just, it wasn't for them. And, you know, I just kind of go through it. So I'd always ask these questions like why, you know, what was the problem? And it was all these kind of, all these issues I just brought up. Um, so as I go through, you know, orientations and questionnaires, consultations and stuff, it's just the sort of thing I've heard, um, you know, they try it out, decide not to stick with it. But like I said, there's amazing benefits to it. If you're an athlete or you've been engaged in fitness for a while, it could be right up your alley. Like if you've been going for a while and you're looking to like take that next step and jump it up. Yeah. It might be absolutely perfect for you. It's also really good because of that group fitness um, aspect. It's, there's a real community. There's a real sense of encouragement. There's a lot of bonding and there's other gyms now that aren't technically CrossFit gyms, but they're more of that high intensity training gyms or like those boot camp gyms, or they take some of those same aspects. There's a new one in the States. It's called, Oh man, I'm trying to remember this. It's in, um, in Long Island, sort of like New Yorkish area. It's called something 45 
and it's based around these 45 minute workouts. And again, they involve a lot of these high intensity, you know, circuit things and training and that's awesome. And like classes I've led, you know, when I've trained with the YMCA, I'll do these, you know, I don't call them boot camp classes per se, but they're these high intensity interval training classes where we're doing stations and timed intervals of, you know, body weight exercises and burpees. Um, and then like, you know, walking lunges or we're doing, you know, barbell rows. Um, we're doing cleans, but then we're doing, you know, like, um, stair jump, like all sorts of thing. This, this super high intensity thing. So these places are available and that's an amazing way to exercise and people love that community and group aspect. Like fitness can be a lonely pursuit. You know, for some people it's not so bad, you know, going to the gym, put your headphones on, boom, zone out. That's awesome. That, that's how it is to me. Um, it's almost like as tough as my workouts are and, you know, they can beat me down. It, it's almost relaxing. I don't know. It's like, it's a hobby to me. It's like, um, it's like golf, you know, like that, that's the way I approach it. So it's, to me, it's never overwhelming. Um, but you know, some people like that encouragement, that bonding, that, that atmosphere that's, you know, more conducive to results and, and whatever. So the, yeah, again, so in that aspect, CrossFit's amazing. Um, it's not always younger people, but like I said, people coming in in that fitter aspect, um, they're transitioning out of other sports, you know, they've maybe gone as far as they can and, and whatever it is and that they're just looking for that competitive environment. It's, it's perfect, obviously for that, like check out videos of the CrossFit games. Um, super inspiring. These people are like, like elite level competitors. Um, they're driven and their ability to perform and, um, achieve amazing results while tons of people are watching. It's really cool, you know. So that's just that's the idea with this show, just giving you as much information as possible. So if CrossFit's been something you'd been considering or you wanted to know more about, hopefully that helps you on your way and is kind of like a jumping off point for you figuring out what you want. Okay, so I'll cut her off there. Like I said, um make sure you subscribe on wherever you listen to podcasts on iTunes or whatever just so you have the shows automatically sent to you and if you want a little more info like i do with you know health information um you can join the email list and then you know i just keep you up to date with stuff i I share just over email whether it's you know relevant fitness information nutrition information or recipes or whatever um so if you sign up you go to regainwellness.com slash guide you can enter your email in and you're all set up so when you do sign up you get started with, I sent off this um, short ebook that's got a list of things food-wise you want to avoid and why you want to avoid them, which is just as important. And it's got, you know, foods you want to be including. It's got some recipes. So definitely sign up for that and then keep you in the loop with everything I'm doing. So regainwellness.com slash guide. Okay, I'm done. Thank you for listening. See you soon.